Minded Podcast, powered by the CDA. All right, how is everybody doing today? We're doing good. Glad to be here. Alive? It's too early. <laughs> Way too early. You know, I was uh, reading a little bit about what both of you up to in Milan, and I don't know if you're even a human being, because all the things you have going on in terms of collections and collaborations this week, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy week. It, it really is. Um, it's not that I made so many new things. There's like four or five things that I'm uh, representing, but there's a lot going on. It's a lot of interviews and a lot of stuff. And, but it's also, you know, it's it's New Year. Come on, it's it's great. Let's not uh, actively have such a horrible life. It's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. But is that like the entire year is planned for this week? Is one of the biggest priorities of the year for you? How do you usually like the calendar worked out? I mean, for, for me, Salon is one of the really fun things in, in, in the year, if you want to say it. And I, I consider it a bit like the new year of design. You know, okay. everybody gets together. We talk what, what happened this year. We make plans for the new year. You know, we, there's some champagne, some fireworks. And, you know, <laughs> fireworks? Yeah, I, was like, I miss the fireworks. fireworks. I don't know where <laughs> you're. <laughs> a lot of fireworks, guys. A lot of fireworks. Uh, nice. That's actually a great thing to think about it, right? It's almost like 2023 officially started this week for design. Things, things start here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. And they're just so inspiring, usually, that it's nice to, you know, come here and find that. Well, you have a very exciting um, exhibition with uh, Lexus. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, thank you. I am so happy with it, first of all. Um, and it's uh, it's an installation in Super Studio, mm -hmm. and it's about, uh, it's inspired by the Lexus Electrified Sport and about the environmental mission of the car. So I sort of deconstructed the shapes of the car into its constituent kind of, I found these kind of leaf shapes that were almost Matisse inspired. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking if Matisse designed a car, he might have done this one. Um, and so I sort of expanded it into this forest and you sort of walk through these shadows and light and um, it's multi-sensory. So there's sound and there's smell and the sound of rain. Um, so it's immersive. And um, it's been fun watching people go through it and kind of slow down and get really meditative as they walk through to discover the cause. So I've been enjoying being here in Milan and doing that. That's great. Yeah. Have you had the chance to walk around the city, see things, or haven't made it quite yet? I don't see a lot. I don't yeah. see a lot. It's really, uh, maybe uh, later in the week I'll be able to see it some. But okay. I don't know, not, not till now, no. <laughs> Too busy. <laughs> Uh, there's people that uh, expect me to, to be, be there, to be there yeah, for, to be for them. So, uh, you know, I'm doing that now. Now, when you're presenting a new collection, for example, like you have this week, and you present it to the press, to partners, and also to clients, what are the things that you really want them to walk away with? And anything specific about that you feel like if there is anything that you're going to leave away with this, this is I want you to kind of you know, embrace it and, and have it in mind. I think, uh, I think, I think the, the client needs it to be, I mean, there's, there's, uh, I think more than four companies, I, four presentations, there's more than four companies, no. right? In Solana. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a yeah. few, <laughs> right? right. A, few. a few. So there's basically a lot of yeah. companies. And, and, and the one thing you can do is make the companies which you, where you work for, make them something that is worthwhile and unique and its own thing. And so it, is, it, it has a, a relevance uh, for being special mm. i think this is one of the most important things that you can do as a designer you, you you make them special because your work you can explain that to people that uh, want to know about it because i think um, it's very easy not to be here it's very easy not to be seen and uh, to be seen is relevant when you want to be in this business do you feel like it's some way yeah well i think um as Marcel was saying, it really is just when you're given a brief, right, then it's really nice to be able to use your creativity to try and express that and find new ways to express it. And what I wanted people to walk away from what I did was really this sense of 
um, uh, 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 being one with an environment and really mm -hmm. understanding what that connection is between us and our environments. And I think those kinds of messages are interesting and important to be able to find in the works that we're given to do, you know? So I think as a designer, that's really, and an architect, that's really what I love finding. So it's been fun to see that. That's interesting. Uh, Marcel, how many, when was your first salon? My first salon was in 1985. Okay, so Long we're talking ago. about I'm, throwing, I'm not going to even throw numbers over there. No, no, it's not years. I was, I was still studying, uh -huh. and uh, I remember the, the, nobody from Holland, I think, went to uh, went to Salona. I was in school, and I was like, uh, there must be something to the year that's important. And then uh, at Annick, uh, former uh, teacher of mine, said, yeah, yeah, there's this affair in Milano. I don't know if it's great because it's like, yeah, it's very commercial, <laughs> as they say in school. In school. Yeah, very commercial. Yeah. And then he said, there's two, uh, I, I know there's two guys from Rotterdam, which is a different city. And, yeah. Uh, that they're going also. I'm like, okay, give me the number. So at the end, we met in the train uh, to, uh, to to Milano. We, we ran around, uh, with, with these two guys, I ran around the city for, for all, all the time. We went to Citerio, we went to Branzi, we went to Mendini, we went to Sotsas. We really showed up before you. It was a fantastic week. I, uh, um, I lost my suitcase. <laughs> this guy, he, he, he had no money for, for buying the uh -huh. last book. I gave him my last money to buy the book. I was in the, in the train. I was kicked out because my ticket wasn't the right one. I slept <laughs> over on the sofa in, in Basel. It was the best thing oh, ever. Right? And, uh, and I think we were the only Dutchies in, in, in Milan. That's probably not, but like, it was, like, there was no one. There was, there was there hardly existed this fair. And at what point? In, internationally. At what point do you feel the fair became what it is today? That really became, have like a global visibility? I mean, it was amazing then, eh? don't get me wrong, it was amazing. I mean, we, it was maybe a little bit more Italian than it is now. It's more international now, but I mean, I remember the big Parmesanos and the Champagne and for us, it was like, what the fuck is happening here, man? No, it was really, it was really, it was so, it was extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. Also was then, it? Also then, it was very, it was extraordinary. Was that especially and there was, and from there a Dutch a, perspective, you uh, think? It uh, uh, and people top. said there was nothing in the city. It was full in the city. It was a lot of things in the city. <laughs> nothing compared to now. But, you know, we, we were busy five days on a road to see everything. And we were running. And, mm. and then there was the fair. And, of course, if you're young, you want to see everything. Yeah. Because, you know, you don't know what you're looking for. You don't know what, I mean, you, you haven't defined what, who you are so I mean at some point you know who you are you know what's your plan you know what's your path and you don't have to see in a way too much anymore it's, it's nice but you don't yeah. want to see nothing anymore because you know this is where I am and that's it but uh, if you're young it's wonderful to run around here and just like be overwhelmed with, uh, with, with, with the stuff and it was also then and then there was the fantastic shows of of Rona Rat and uh, uh, just mind boggling for yeah. for a kid. Do yeah. you remember like any bigger design or architect that was exhibiting that day was showing lunch of the collection that year? Something they stand out? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, that, like I'm saying, uh, Rona Rat had wonderful shows. Uh, Inge Maurer did wonderful things. I mean, there was Capellini that was always mesmerizing. Uh, there was B&B, I mean, like the, the, mm. the old greats, right? And, and then there was Alessi. I mean, there was all these companies that, uh, and still today, they're, they're relevant and, and things have changed, but you know, it was, um, it was spectacular also then. Trust me. What about you? For me, I think it was about 12 years ago. Okay. And I did exactly what you did. I just sort of ran around everywhere. I couldn't get enough of it. And it was really sort of interesting. I mean, particularly coming from India and then living in New York and then coming to Milan. 
you know, it, there is still this very DNA of being Italian here. You know, there's there's this uh, that's sort of the ground, right? On top of which everything gets layered. All the other international designers, and mm. and for me, I have to say, I still feel the best thing about Salone is is and uh, and for Salone, is discovering all of the unexpected things. All of the young people who have these interesting ideas that are just you know, and I love seeing it, and I really love seeing. Um, the influences of design, like even if you look kind of historically, you can always see where the where the lines are going, you know, yeah. and what's new. And, and you might not like it, but it's still really good for food for thought. And when I take those things back to the studio, it's really interesting to look at my work in that context and then see, yeah, you know, it's something new or not, you know. And that's usually how I like to judge, um, like post Salone. Mm. becomes a very kind of important thing, you know, because you see so much, it's like you've got to be able to digest it and process it and, and a few things stand out. Um, and I usually love, like, I think um, the Trinale, for instance, they always do an amazing show, mm. you know. Um, there's always something that you don't expect that becomes um, something that stays in your head, which is really incredible. You said something earlier about if you have an opportunity to be seen, you need to be seen in this industry, right? Compared to Milan right now, there's so much going on. I mean, you cannot be able to see everything, you know, be everywhere. How does a company stand out, in your opinion? Yeah, I, uh, it's, it's what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I mean, there's, there is a lot of audience also, huh? so there's a lot of companies, sure. there's also a lot of audience. It's not that you know, you'll be lonely in the corner having no audience, so there is an audience. Um, but, you know, it's nice if the audience that uh, you, you surprised this year, if they come back next year because they're like, oh, this was interesting, that, you know, there's a consistency that they're not like, what? What is this? No, so, like, so you need consistency of, uh, of an idea that is you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that is changing, that is special. As, as a designer, I think the, the best thing you can do for a company is, is to make them special, but also to make them themselves. Uh, and, and in the meantime, to create who you are and what mm -hmm. you want to do as, as, as one thing. So, so really choose your, the companies well is one of the first things you have to try. I mean, most designers would say like, oh, if, if I can get into a company, that's great. Yeah, it's not. You have to find the right company and otherwise stay out because you're going to do them a disservice and yourself also, you're wasting your time. It's, it's really relevant to, to, to find the, the connection that supports both. I mean, it's like a marriage. Mm. No, it's not like a marriage. It's like getting, <laughs> it's like making babies. <laughs> it's a, it's Even a, better. It's, a, it's like, I always, I always consider... My, 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 the things that I make that my babies. Obviously, I'm the mother, and mm -hmm. obviously the, the company is the father. And you want to you want to do things that you, know, you cannot otherwise and do things things that combine the genetic formula of both. Hopefully, get the best out of it, and then make something as a mother that you know the father can recognize himself. Fathers love it. <laughs> it is mine. <laughs> Yeah, it, my eyes. yeah. If you want to, you want to work for your baby, you better yeah. know, know it's yeah, yours, right? No, you better know it's yours. Yeah, it takes a lot of effort. <laughs> I love anyways, the way you anyway, said that. And, and so you become a family, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And um, I think it's what we can do for for companies, and what we can do. And then in the meantime, we have to do you know, great design. Yeah. Which, uh, there's a lot of um, things out there that. You know, maybe pretty or so, but then they're not designed. There's, a, there's, a no, there's no novelty, no, no new mm. ideas. And I think it's beautiful to have new ideas. I love ideas. I love ideas, right? So if we can adapt for companies, we can be meaningful. Yeah, I think expressing the ethos of something, you know, of a company, of a client, of a brief, of a project, that's the most important thing. And really being able to find the innovation inside that, you know, to say, what am I doing that's different? Um, why is this relevant? Like you mm. even have to ask yourself that question, like why am I doing this? Has it been done before? Is it a better idea? Is there a better idea out there? And there are all these standards we apply to it, right? But I really love this idea of having a baby and like being able to recognize its genetic code yeah. in that, which is a really beautiful way of putting it in terms of 
you know, you're, you really are giving birth to something. And it's nice to think of design as kind of this, this long trend, right? Everything we do is one link in the chain. The next thing is going to build on that. And, and, and it's somewhat important to be able to think about that, I think. Yeah. For a client. So that they're important and they're contributing to, to what design is. I think the honesty and the important thing that I'm hearing as well is the power of understanding who you are, what mm -hmm. you want to accomplish, but also say no, as you mentioned, you need to really identify with the company or the client. Because I feel a lot of times people get so excited with the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm giving the opportunity to work with yeah. this brand or that brand, but there's so much that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And so, so much needs to work to make this a successful partnership. You and both of you are not strange on collaborations and partnerships. So how do you go about when someone reach out to you and say, hey, I have a great idea, like could you work with us in this project? Do you have a process of elimination, like box they need to check before you engage in a project? Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, I would say mm -hmm. I'd, I'd have to feel passionate about whatever it is they're mm -hmm. presenting. You know, if it strikes a chord, if it makes me feel like, Yes, there's an emotion here that I can generate. Um, then there's something that I'm that I'm curious about. Okay. You know, it has to spark your curiosity. I think curiosity is like the curiosity, inspiration, passion. Those would be the boxes I would check. And then you look at you know client structure, their ability to give you freedom, to give you creative freedom, um, to be able to stay out of your way, and let you do what you do best, and then be able to support you. Like those kinds of things come in. Um, to see, because you can't make a successful project without a, without a great client, so that's mm. for sure. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the box is... Uh, quite long. Is, no, it's not <laughs> quite long, but it's obviously there's a lot of obvious things in it. But one of the, one of the interesting things maybe for this podcast is also, to, I mean, it's like, I mean, I, I, I can do work on my own, right? It's like... Yeah, you don't need a client, I, yeah. I can do. Right. I don't need clients. So in, in a way, without being like difficult, I'm, I'm like, okay, what do you give me mm -hmm. as, as a client? What do you give me to be better than, than, than I was? What do you give me so I can do something that I couldn't have done without you? Mm -hmm. What do you give me so I can excel, so that I'm super curious? So that, like every, every, every work that you make with, with a client, you know, it's like, it's, it's a box full of uh, puzzle pieces and you have to put the puzzle, you know, the, the, the box is a white box, so you mm -hmm. don't know what you're going to make, but it's, it's a box full of puzzle pieces with opportunity. So what's in the box? What do you give? Okay, I'll put my stuff in the box. What do you put in the box? Is it something that I'm really interested in? Can I do something special with it? Is it something that's going to, you know, bring me further as, as a, as, as a, is it mind? Is this something I want to, I want to talk about later when yeah. I'm doing the interviews? Is this going to be something mm -hmm. that I, I can just be excited about mm -hmm. when I'm talking with you? Yeah, you really do have to think about All the idea. Things. You All know, the idea has got to be inspiring, and the the people have to come to you with, really, um, what can? Why would you do it? You've got to answer, be able to answer that question very strongly. You know, there has to be a very strong reason for why. I think this is one of the things that get a lot of time to build work, you know, to really understand and having the time to have those conversations. When, when, when you're talking to a young designer, someone who's out of school recently, I'm sure you had an opportunity to talk to many people mm. from school and they come to you with experience and background. What are some of the key points that you like to share in the industry? Well, you know, it's still come. I mean, I teach as well mm -hmm. as, as work. And um, even um, one of the nicest things about Lexus is also that they have a design award. Mm -hmm. And this year they've given it to four really young, amazingly talented people who are making things that will save the world. You know, everything from a jacket that collects fog and makes drinkable water to a natural, you know, humidifier, purifier to a bag that dissolves. Like all of these things that, that can actually change the way we live. And I think it's really important for, and I was having conversations with, with these young people, and I just think that the thing that comes out is their desire, I think particularly now, mm. to live in a world that's better than they found it. And I think that's really strong. And to be able to guide that and to support it in kind of a way that design can really do that. You know, design is a way to do that and to let them know that design is an actual, real possibility and a way of changing things. It's not just decorative. It's not just, you know, mm. 
I'm doing something now and I will do something different tomorrow and it won't have a lasting impact. It's the idea that it has a lasting impact. So that's the thing that I really, I think it's important for them to know and that I always try to tell them, yeah. And they tell us really mm. when you see it, when you see what young people are working on these days. What about you, Ms. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have one thing that I always say, but uh, in a way I was thinking that uh, one of the things I, I, I could say today is that uh, for for designers young, I mean, it, it, they think about the product, the project, and uh, I, th I think the one thing you have to learn as soon as you can is to understand the systems behind the, 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 the product that you're making because it's it's ultimately dominating uh, the opportunity for change and it's dominating the opportunity for products that are better, more interesting, and they, they dominate your behavior that you can realize. And and there's a lot of different type of systems behind what you're doing. And the more fast you are part of that conversation and the more fast you start understanding the systems, I think uh, the more you can do for your client, but also the more you will have an impact in this uh, in this part of the world, I think. Can you give me an example of the system that you prefer to? Yeah, it's, it, it, it's like how things work. It's like uh, how people find their clients, but it's also how investments are organized. It's also uh, how materials like or how, how materials go through companies, how, mm -hmm. how products get to their end. It's like there's all these things that are... Um, I mean, I, th I think we, it's a little bit of an old industry, this one. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and Yeah, we've and, been making things since the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of an old industry. And it is, we're talking about that we're so innovative, but a really old fashioned industry. And the, the industry needs really to fundamentally move. And it's not going to happen because we do a new chair. It's going to happen because we also mm -hmm. really crush the systems that are there and set up new companies that have new systems. The systems can't always change. Products can change, but systems are yes. hard nuts to crack. Yeah. And, uh, and and so we have to we have to also work on that. And and uh, and again that's not uh, the stuff that that kids of twenty four should be should should do, but you know, the more fast you understand the systems, the more fast you can be part of change i think they're going towards it a lot more though i see that a lot i see them wanting to crash the system mm -hmm. and think about crashing the system in as much as they still want to be part of the system and understand you know yeah. how to get in it make a name for themselves and and get there i think there's some ideas out there i think i i, I think it will come but don't, don't you have to as you mentioned understand the system yes to be able to, to crash uh, it uh, yeah. to break the wheel yeah, yeah, for example yeah. that's what i'm saying like if, if you're a student uh, nobody basically talks about all this structural <laughs> stuff yeah, behind yeah. the band thing. And that's maybe not also so bad because the, the first make you know, a nice cup of just the first of Figure the it out. <laughs> so, okay. You don't have to learn everything in school. You, you have a few years after yeah. if, mm -hmm. if you like this, uh, this, this kind of you know, culture. You can do it afterwards. But at, in a way, it's like, you know, as soon as you, you know, are part of this universe, then Study, 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 study. Yeah. Because there's a huge amount of intelligence behind uh, this piece of ceramic. There's mm -hmm. this, this yeah, organization that's, behind it. That's the thing. I'm always telling people, like, the, the most wonderful thing about being a designer is that you're never bored. Like, you can look at this table and this edge and, like, you know, there's so much to learn here. You know, why was this done this way? What's this material? Why is it this big? Why is it that wide? And there's reasons for all of it, right? And you get so fascinated by that when you're a designer and you're really learning how to do this. Um, and there's a lot to learn. Yeah. There really is a lot to learn. If you were given a chance to change something in the industry, like you have a magical wand, <laughs> you can, with the, you know, snap, what would it be the thing that you feel like the system that needed to be changed as, as soon as possible? Well, for me, I think, it, particularly in the US, it would be really nice to see some sort of, um, uh, I would say, governmental or community support for design mm. and for the value of design. You see it more in Europe, and I think you see it certainly in other places, but in many countries, you know, there isn't really 
um, either the opportunity or the money or the or the education to really understand that design can actually change how we live and and make make us and the world around us better. And it would be nice to see some support for that that really comes from, you know, the structure of the society. I think that would be a nice thing. If I had a magic wand, that's what I would do. Yeah. I would make one more color. One more <laughs> color. I like yeah. that. Yeah, one that didn't exist yet. Something like outside of the world of existing color. Now, do you think as we progress with technology and AI being around, that is something that we'll see, like new, you know, computer generated information will be able to develop in not only new colors, but also completely new concepts that we haven't really pushing forward. I don't know about the concept, maybe a color, maybe, <laughs> you know, I don't know about the concept though. Yeah. Well, we have to change our eyes for a new color. <laughs> it's a little bit complicated. Yeah. I think AI doesn't change our eyes. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can organize some, no, you never know, you never know. It's a crazy time to be think about what could change. I, I think it's uh, the, what, what AI definitely is going to do. It is going to change our industry massively, yeah? Mm -hmm. Massively. I think it's always interesting if you, if you see that uh, the, in a way, the, the pencil, the pencil design, the sides of design, yeah? mm -hmm. We always think that we mm -hmm. are the, mm -hmm. the, the bright minds behind it. But if you are a smith and you hammer a fence 100 years ago, it gets wonderful as soon as there's a designer that has to draw it up. <laughs> he has a flat piece of paper. <laughs> Everything gets a bit flat yeah. because he has to measure if yes. you did it well. So it's all has to be organized. Then at some point you get some uh, computer drawings and it gets really all cool. And then there's computer added design and everything gets really crazy. Uh, and now we get this tool and this tool has its own, like, um, it has its own quality. It has its own quality, yeah, and, that's and, true. Uh, and all these lazy designers that have done minimalism for years, they're going to eat <laughs> their fucking heart out. <laughs> because nothing Ooh. has to be minimal anymore. Uh, we could just see incredible depth and, 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 and in, intricate uh, things today with... Uh, being staying as lazy as you are so people are going to just use their laziness to do really different things is what they used to do see i just think Sandra you very have lazy to add people, it huh? uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'll be taking full advantage of that uh, i think marcel and i have to have to disagree here i don't think designers are lazy i think designers work really hard but i do I'm think i'm not saying they don't know, work hard right oh, okay all right um oh you mean thinking lazy I, I just think, you know, we have this tendency every time we get a new tool to say, ah, this is the tool, mm -hmm. the tool. And it's not, actually, it's a tool. And we still go back to the very first tool and we come back from that. Like, particularly as an architect, I think, you know, I always tell people, you have to start with the pencil. You've got to understand that and then you can move to the computer. And then maybe AI might help you figure out some things that possibly you could call it lazy, but maybe you don't have to spend as much time as you might have, you know, figuring out some you know, stair, riser up and down, or how mm. big a railing needs to be, or, you know, what the codes are that you're working with, or how to make a project uh, product safe. But then the question of how you make it really relevant, really different, really innovative, now the pressure's on. You've really got to show me something, you know, if, you ca if something else is solving all the other problems for you. So in some ways, I think, yeah, you could think about it as designers becoming more lazy, but I do think that the challenge you know, rises and to do better things, to do really better things. You, but overall, I would assume you're excited about the possibilities. Mm. I'd say I have a sort of a medium level of excitement, of, of uh, <laughs> caution, <laughs> caution and excitement at the same time. And this is because I did a, a sculpture um, a couple of years ago that had to do with AI and ML, and I really saw how that was reading emotions, uh, people's emotions and reflecting them in lights. And I, I saw the possibility, but it was also really about, you know, it's, us, it's up to us as humans to be self-aware and to keep this in check and do that. I mean, you can't just sort of give up your privacy and give up everything and then say it's somebody else's fault. It's mm -hmm. not, it's in your hands. Um, so I think that's the thing we need to remember. Uh, with Moy, we're making, uh, we now present a machine <laughs> that uh, we're gonna sell to 
places around the world that's going to make based on uh, an intelligent algorithm your personal home perfume, which I'm super stoked about. I mean, I think I think it's just amazing that we can we can do a perfume for the price of a normal perfume that is unique to you. I mean, like, I, th I think the the promise of the industry, like, the, the, 200 years ago, there were kings and queens, and then there was bums, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, then we created the industry because the industry would create a, a new quality level for all, right? But what it did, it mediated everything, right? Like nobody's nobody's king and queen anymore except the king, king and the queen, and they did not my country not even. And, and, then, <laughs> and then and and the rest in a way we live with like yeah. look, look at this sofa. I mean it's a beautiful sofa, but like wh what is it compared to the thrones we mm. should have been sitting on today? Mm. The magic things that we that should fill our lives today. And, and that's why that's why I think I think designers are way behind on what we should have done for an audience. And we think if we bend a tube, we're amazing. We're not. Like mm. there's so much work to be done. And if, if we if we if we now can create, you know, for you a home perfume, only for you, for yeah. really for you, with an intelligent algorithm that really gives you something that you like. I recognize myself, right? If we can do that, now we're getting near to something that I would say, now we can start thinking that we're kings and queens. Now there's something that is made for you, that is that bows for you instead of you have to bow for. Yeah, I think it's the ability to really create this sense of wonder, you know? And I think that's really, really important, really important for people to feel when they see things, this sense of joy, this sense of inspiration, this sense of wonder. I don't know that AI is at the place where it can really do that, mm -hmm. you know? Maybe it never will, you know? But I think Marcel's really right. I think, yeah, it we will. should, just, we should just, do just that. Just imagine that we, can, that we can do you a perfume, that when you smell it and you're like, this is my home perfume, your home perfume. I do it now. your name on the label. <laughs> and you smell it and you're like, Oh my God! Mm -hmm. Oh my all God! The oh my God! Yeah. Just, just try to feel it. Oh my God! I recognize yeah. this yeah. as something that is picked up from nothing and is. Yeah, but that's the mine. thing: feeling, right? It has to generate feeling, and, and if it, it doesn't, yes, and it has to serve, yes, and has to serve your feeling. Okay. And and that I think is is both the the joy and the challenge. I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know. Possible. Well, I know it's still in the middle of the week and both of you have a lot to do, super busy. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it for the conversation, for the insight. I'm, I took a, I'm taking a whole different approach about partnership here, about making the baby, making it look like, no, it was, it was my big takeaway today for sure. But uh, I want to make sure that you can uh, give a shout out to a little bit about what you're doing over here about the exhibition and where people can see your work. Um, people can see uh, the installation I've done for Lexus is called Shape by Air. It's at Super Studio, and um, yeah, it's it's open to the public now. So please go. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Put a map of all the things. Marcel has <laughs> <laughs> the entire city ringed. <laughs> I mean, I, I have new new things in a few places, but there's a lot there's stuff everywhere. I have a lot of clients that are happy to show here, and I, I wouldn't want to forget one because that would be really not so nice. Uh, two things I want to want to put out. Of course, you have to come to Moy because I think you know that's where all my energy goes uh, uh, here in Milano. Not all, and the, and another thing that I'm, that is really not so big and not so relevant, but for me is relevant is that you know it's like uh, one of the first things that I ever did in this world of, of design is I did the 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 pipe with the with Buffy, which is a, a shower with a mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. angle, and uh, and Buffy decided to discontinue, but they took care. Of bringing it to uh, to Fantini that is now producing this oh, thing, nice. and I I cannot thank uh, Roberto Gavazzi enough for you know taking care of our baby so well <laughs> to after after 20 years you know bring uh, bring bring Pipe to uh, to the next uh, next family that's going to take care of it uh, go see it it's worthwhile yeah.
from an old baby to a new baby, you know, hopefully people will go all over the city and enjoy everything it has to offer. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you for having us. During Milan Design Week, Sutherland Furniture is unveiling their latest collection from their first creative director, Eugenie Quitlet. Aptly named Monaco, the collection captures the atmosphere of the French Riviera. Eugenie says that the collection evokes where land meets sea and is a great choice for both indoor and outdoor living. A highlight of the new collection is the Monaco dining armchair, with a timeless shape that makes it the star of any space. To experience the limitless design possibilities of the Monaco collection from Sutherland Furniture during Milan Design Week, visit Via Ciavasso 17 20121 Milan. Minded Podcast, powered by the CDA. This episode was created in partnership with Gagano Sutherland Furniture, Marta Sala, and Illy Cafe. A special thank you to CC Tapis.